Hey you guys, this is Tom from Tom's Interesting Talk and today we're going to work on our little fish tank. This is a small fish tank inspired by Father Fish. I have never personally created a soil sand tank like this. Um, unfortunately, I put this one together about a month and a half ago and I'm very very sorry that I did not film the actual process of me putting this together but we can talk about it um, and I'll explain what I did I mean I basically just used Build-A-Soil 3.0 um, from buildasoil.com and there's about two two and a half inches maybe three inches of soil in there and then I used a, a nice filtered pool sand and I have about three to four inches of pool sand in there and that really holds that soil down. Now in a sense your grass is going to be the roots of that grass is going to grow down into that soil and use the nutrients that are in that soil to make an amazing to grow amazing grass um, and help supply nutrients to whatever plants that are growing in this tank it's really a neat little ecosystem as you can tell this tank was very very dirty it's been about a month and a half I really haven't wanted to do anything to it because I'm really kind of letting this tank just establish itself I started off by seeding these two little filters the little sponge filters that I have in here in my 155 gallon tank I ran them in that tank for about two weeks um, and then I started this tank, put it together, put the little filters in here, and then I ran this consistently for probably another couple weeks. So about a month before I put fish in it. Um, I did a lot of testing, and I think I did a good job. I seeded the tank also with water from my 155 gallon fish tank and used um, a rock from that fish tank and this grass itself was from my 155 gallon fish tank so I really seeded it with a lot of good bacteria that really sped up the process of getting this tank you know fully functional the, bio, the, the biological system becoming fully functional um, as you can tell you know there was a lot of algae on this tank now, I mean, algae is a good thing, as Father Fish would preach, and you know, if you've watched any of his videos, you know, he believes in, holistically, you know, that there's no bad algae. And I didn't want to take all the algae out of this thing. Um, I only, I'm only going to clean one of the filters in this situation, and I'm going to leave the other filter um, going to help, you know, keep that biological system going. And then, if you notice, on the back glass, I did not um, take any of the algae off of that and there's a pretty good amount of algae just um, sitting on the sand on the top of the sand as well um, so I'm gonna you know here it is I'm vacuuming it you know just trying to clean it up in general and just pull some of that algae out um, so that we can start with a good base the best th the best cure for getting rid of algae is just you just gotta knock it down you gotta uh, take some of it out out of the system um, and then you know it's because there's always you're always going to have algae in any culture of water any kind of water you put in here there's going to be some form some little bit of algae and then whatever and you know if you're if you're not doing a hundred percent water change of course you know there's going to be algae in the water that was in there so it's 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 an absolute natural part of the process as far as running this biological ecosystem. Algae is good. You know, you'll know if your tank is dirty or not by how much algae is growing. If your algae is growing good like this, you're either getting too much sun or you have an excess of nitrates and it's allowing that algae to bloom. Um, it's a really neat process. You know, I've talked about this in the past, and um, if you'd like to know more in depth about this process, um, please go to uh, refer to my other video, the nitrogen cycle. Excuse me.
So you see, you know, I'm just kind of walking through the process. I scraped all the algae off the glass with a razor blade. You know, razor blade works really well. You know, I make sure and always buy glass tanks if you're using a plastic tank. Um, you do not want to use a razor blade, but glass, it really, as long as you, you know, don't dig into the glass, you know, you're not going to scrape it or scratch it or anything like that. You just got to be careful um, with what you're doing. Um, I'm also took a brush and basically brushed the inside of this thing to really just knock down all the algae that's building up on the glass you know so that we'll have a very nice viewing surface you know I mean as much as I'd love to be just totally holistic and let this thing just be all green and you know and growing like say the lake would you know you go to the lake and you see algae growing all over the place um, but here it is I like to view you my, view my little ecosystems this sits on a very small coffee table and it's a very small tank and my little sitting area as you saw at the beginning you saw my lemon tree that we're growing and then I have a couple palm trees that I'm growing and um, a ZZ plant and then I have this little fish tank as well sitting on that coffee table um, so you know I have a whole it's a whole little sitting area that I've created and you know basically a little natural area where I can go sit down and read my phone and you know and just feel like I have trees around me I have things growing around me there's life around me and it's just a nice comfortable area that I've created in my house to try to you know unwind after work and and enjoy enjoy looking at you know the things that I'm growing so I'm trying to make this fish tank you know of course be as biological as possible but I want to be clean and presentable as well. So I'm going to spend a t little bit of time, you know, getting this thing looking pretty good. Uh, right now, I think I'm basically over cleaning the sponge filters and, and getting those sorts of things ready to be put back into the tank. Um, and I'm also gonna brush the inside of the tank as well so in my last video I had um, a basket of little baby guppies well you guys I hate to report this my the basket that my baby guppies were in unfortunately the little suction cup that holds it to the side of the tank released and I lost three quarters of our babies. At some point during the night, that basket must have, you know, lost the suction. And God, unfortunately, you know, just a bunch of them got into the, my 155 gallon tank. You know, and in there I have Grammys and we have the giant dinos and of course the angelfish and, you know, just a bunch of fish that you know, to have that unfortunately is just sushi to them. Um, so we just lost a, a bunch of our little babies. But hey, one thing about good about guppies is, man, they will persevere. Um, guppies will continuously breed um, as long as there's a male and a female. So I'm not super worried about it. We're going to add a couple guppies to this small tank probably another female and another male or two and I'm gonna take that um, yellow glow tetra out of this tank and put it back into the 155 gallon um, after I had went about a month of seeding this tank he was the first one that I put into this tank uh, because he had a little what I thought was ick at first but unfortunately it was um, it was a little bacteria, a little white puffy bacteria that had built up on his fin. So unfortunately in this little tank I actually had to do a little um, bacteria treatment for that little guy. And of course that put me behind a little bit on wanting to put fish 
or put guppies and trying to breed and do all that kind of stuff in this tank because I was treating a bacteria problem and using it as a as an emergency you know medical tank so as you see his fins are nice and clear now um, it took about a week for me to get the bacteria to finally drop off his fin and he's been in there probably another week you know without any problems um, and then that's when I put two mamas two mama guppies that are pretty pregnant in there so we'll take him out we'll put a couple more guppies in and hopefully those two mamas that are really pregnant are will have another batch of babies here in just a little bit of time and everything will be good and we'll have a whole bunch more little baby guppies god they're so cute and you see i still have two in here um you've seen them floating around you know they're little guys i think i have two or three in this small tank that are left from that back uh, batch from the basket um so you just saw me add a little bit of um, aquarium salt to the tank and then finish off by brushing the inside and just pulling a little you know some remainders of small pieces of debris out of the tank now here it is I'm showing you you know the soil and the sand layers um, you know that's that 3.0 build a soil sand or soil and and then of course the pool filter sand um, another three or four inches of pool filter sand um, so far so good I've been impressed with the system um, it's been worked really good the grass has absolutely went off so this tank's been now about a month and you saw just how full that tank was um, of the grass unfortunately that little patch of grass that's down it's guppy grass that's down there in the bottom it has not seeded enough yet and it's there's still a little bit of green in there and I'm hopeful that it will come back um, it just needs a little more time I think to to seed itself you know that the sand itself is really inert and I'm just hoping that that stuff will put on roots uh, deep enough to dig down into that soil and we're gonna find out because I don't know if the water will support the roots at this point in the game as far as the full spectrum of nutrients so we'll see you know that's a that's a we'll see one I have another little patch of that same grass in my big 155 gallon tank um, and it's doing a little bit better but it hasn't quite taken off yet either um, so we'll we'll see here in just a minute I'm gonna flash over and show you my 155 gallon tank but right now I'm gonna pull that glow tetra out and put him back into the 155 gallon tank we'll get him here in just a second there we go I tell you that tank is so small that you know that's a pretty small net too but that tank is so small it's really hard to get you know get get it in and out of there you see so that's a little male guppy beautiful little guppy you know silver front body and black fin um, and has a little bit of coloration to top at the top of it by its eyes so it's going to be a good breeder um, and make some very beautiful guppies especially if that black one breeds with these yellow these yellow guppies and then there's another darker colored female um, that has the the black fin the black back fin so another female another male in with two to three small babies um, from the batch of guppies that we had in the basket and then two female golden guppies that are currently very very pregnant and will be you know having babies very soon all right here we are my 155 gallon tank you know this one this is a full biological system using sponge filters as well you know you've heard me talk about this tank before there's my angel fish isn't he beautiful actually it's a she isn't she beautiful she's waving to you a little bit um, there's my julii catfish and there's the last of my curbenzis females um, unfortunately I was not very successful at keeping 
Kerbenzis alive. And I'm not exactly sure why. I'm not sure if the tank conditions just weren't quite right for for them, but hell, she survived and and she's she's been a good tank mate so far to all these other fish. Um, she really doesn't mess with anybody too much. But she's really pretty. Um, when they get pregnant, um, the belly of those Kerbenzis just get such a beautiful purple and crimson color. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh-oh. There's a little cock in the tank. Yep, that's my little glass cock. And then I have a few different glass pieces that are in this tank. There's a mushroom. And then a diamond. And then back to my little tiny five gallon sand and soil ecosystem that we created as basically a guppy breeding tank. Um, I want to literally have 30, 40, 50 guppies in my 155 gallon tank. So I'm gonna breed them in this small tank and move them to the big tank little by little um, and have fun doing it. Um, guppies are just natural breeders you know I have this tank um, set at about 80 degrees um, you know our house because we live in Mesa Arizona and it's it's just hot down here so during the summers we keep our house at 80 degrees and that tank pretty much stays at room temperature which is 80 degrees 79 80 sometimes 81 because it does sit closer to the back door which tends to be um, pretty warm here again is another look at the 155 gallon tank. We're going to take a look in just a moment at my pearl grommy. Um, this grommy is beautiful. Um, just beautiful. He's been a great addition. And there's my angelfish again. He's giving us a side eye. He's like, oh yeah, you better watch out. I'm coming for you. Isn't she cool? She really is. And then there's my Grammy again. Uh, he's got a lot of personality. Um, it's funny to watch Grammys use their little tentacles because they're kind of blind and they use those tentacles to feel around. And, you know, there's my other gold Grammy. Um, and that's a female. So I have the pearl Grammy male and the gold Grammy female. And then, of course, that's a female angelfish as well. And then you see my giant dinos in there. You see the black-skirted tetras. There's that glow tetra that I took out of the small tank. Now having fun in the 155-gallon. You guys, thank you again for spending some time with me. As always, I appreciate you. Hey, please like and subscribe. You know that's what makes it all go around. I'd love to get up to 100 subscribers. That would be so happy again thank you guys